Hey guys, it's Dylan with CT Aquatics, and this is our new sump system for the display tank. And today we're gonna go through how we got to this point. Uh, so obviously we've got this giant six foot by 18 by 18 uh, Synergy reef systems sump. This is the SK72. Uh, so this is going to be the further display tank, and I have all of the plumbing parts. So everything came in in gray and red. Uh, schedule 80, we use the schedule 80 because it's gray, and then it's just regular schedule 40 red pipe. So here's our gate valve. And then we've got, here's a couple pieces of pipe that I was just checking. We've got our bulkheads and some of our uh, pipe clamps and clips, uh, and then all of our fittings. Uh, BRS sent this to us. Uh, everything was organized really nicely. Everything was put into little bags and uh, I just dumped them out into the box like this. I'm just gonna go over some basic stuff. I'm gonna start filming, start doing some uh, gluing. I'm not gonna glue everything today. Uh, probably gonna get a decent amount done, just some fittings like this T. I'm gonna get the, our reducers into it. Uh, so we've got one and a half inch to one inch. Our return pump is gonna be pushing water out through one outlet that's one and a half, and then it will divide to the one inch. Uh, the top one will likely go to our UV sterilizer. This one will go to our manifold, and then after both of those, it'll return back to the uh, tank. Uh, I went ahead and opened up our flow sensor for the apex. Um, so we're gonna be mainly using this FS1. I'm also gonna hook up these smaller ones to the manifold. Um, but this one is gonna be so that we can really monitor the flow through our uh, UV sterilizer because right now we're not getting enough flow through it. That's one of the issues that we have. Uh, take manifold, this is how it came from Adaptive Reef. All glued together using gray fittings and pipes so it's absolutely perfect for the color scheme. Uh, it just comes with two ball valves on it. Uh, so we purchased this because actually right now the Ball valves have gotten really expensive, so to build this would have actually been more money, so this saves time and money. So definitely recommend this. If you've never used a manifold before, basically when it's closed off like this, water just goes through it like it's a regular return line. So this is something you would want to use on a return line, not on a drain. Um, but when you open one of these, you now have water that can flow from your return pump through some sort of media or reactor. So you could put it to, you know, a carbon reactor or GFO. Um, you could even use it for water changes. I do that at home, actually. I have a, the end of the ball valve is attached to a tube. Uh, so I just keep it closed. When I'm not doing a water change, I just can remove this. That has the tube to it, it stays closed. When I wanna do a water change, all I have to do, screw it on, open it, water comes out of the tank. When I want water to go back in, I just pump it back in uh, from my vat. I'm going to be using this clear PVC primer so that when we prime our joints, we don't see any color. They do make purple primer. This is normally available at the local hardware store. I just don't like the way that the purple looks because you can see it. If you're doing plumbing at home, you may need to use the purple um, because you can see it and therefore an inspector can tell if you've used it or not. Um, but the clear can be used on a project like this because we don't need it to be inspected. Primer is required though because it's used to soften the pipe and joints before you apply the glue. Uh, without softening, you won't get a true bond and your joints are more likely to leak. You may need to order the clear primer separately. It may not be available at the local hardware store. This is the cement that I'll be using. It is just regular clear PVC cement. Using the clear primer and cement, you should not see it on the joints. And if any does leak out, you won't see it because it's clear.
Um, so, so far, most of this is included. I think one piece of this might be so far, but um, this is how the plumbing is going to be laid out. Now, it's not perfect. Like I said, it's not glued, so it's just kind of leaning against the wall. Uh, I've marked out this area. I've pulled the sump away from this wall, same distance that I want it away from the wall uh, where it's going. Uh, and then I started laying out the pipe. Uh, so, and then I also marked, this is where the ceiling is. So, the two drain lines are gonna come down from the tank above, that's upstairs, and then just come down and drain right down like this. Pretty straightforward. Again, this isn't glued yet, so um, tolerances will be a little tighter and better once everything's in place. And then for the return line, I haven't really done anything with this yet. Uh, it's gonna go up to a ball valve, then from the ball valve, it'll go to the UV sterilizer, and then that'll go to the tank. And then this will go over to the manifold, and then up to the tank as well. Uh, so the only thing I haven't really figured out is the spacing from the wall where I want the return line to go because it's gonna have to go past these two um, drains. So I will figure that part out, uh, you know, shortly as I'm doing it. And then I think I'm gonna end up going in front and then we can angle it back and up. And then same with this. Uh, once it comes out of the sterilizer, I'll determine where it needs to go. So let me set this up on the tripod and I'll just start working on this and you guys can watch along. Doing a project like this, it's good to keep in mind that you can always dry fit everything and mark it and test it. Get it where you need it, and then you can pull it off and actually glue it for real. So a couple of these joints are already glued, but I'm just using this Sharpie to mark where the next one needs to go. I'm just going to mark a couple at a time before I glue them. And I'm just taking this clamp off. And now I think I'm ready to start gluing. Now, once it's glued, I'm getting the Sharpie off. In order to get a Sharpie mark off, it's actually very easy. You can just draw over the Sharpie mark with the Sharpie, and doing this will make it so you can wipe it off of the pipe quickly. So I'm gonna set up for gluing over at the other table, so I don't get any glue on the sump. So we got our Sharpie marks on the pipe. So when I put these together, we'll just line those up. When doing PVC glue, you have two parts. You have primer and the actual glue. So I'm just gonna open both of these. So it's pretty simple, you want to start with primer.
you don't need your little cotton ball to be completely soaked. Just wet enough so that you can put a nice even coat along the inside of your joint. And you'll also want to put it around the outside of the pipe that will be going into the connection. And I usually use the Sharpie mark as a reference for how far I have to go on this outside piece. I usually can tell that I put enough primer on when I start to see a little bit of color come off onto my cotton ball. So you can probably see that there's some red and gray on here. When you put it back into the primer and spin it around, it cleans itself very quickly. Uh, so now that the primer's on, the plastic has been softened, I'm going to use my PVC glue now. And I don't need a lot. You want a thin coating on all the surfaces that are going to be in contact. Uh, this cotton ball is much bigger, so it absorbs a lot. So I'm pretty much just kind of squeeze, try to squeeze as much out as I can. And then we're going to apply this to the surfaces that already have the primer, making sure to not leave too much excess. Again, you're looking for just a nice thin coating without any drips. So like that, and now, we will glue them together, giving a quarter turn or so, and lining up the Sharpie marks, and then just holding it. You're gonna wanna hold it for about 15 to 30 seconds. I got a little bit of a drip, which I now want to wipe out. If you don't hold it, you'll see that the uh, pieces try to separate themselves. So you really need to just apply a lot of pressure for, like I said, 15 to 30 seconds. I think that came out pretty good. So now you can see, Sharpie marks lined up. And you can probably see a little bit of glue around the edge, but it's so small you won't even notice it once it's in. So that's how you do a glue connection. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue along with the rest of these. So here's an update at the end of day two of the sump plumbing. So again, the sump is placed against this wall to um, kind of emulate where um, all the pipes will go when it's actually in place. So I have five inches from the wall to the back of the sump, which will give me about two inches at the front. This should give me plenty of space to put wires and anything like that and these aren't glued yet so we can always make some adjustments now these the actual runs of pipe are all currently glued so both of these drains are glued but they're not glued into the bulkhead so again we can always make some modifications if needed um, and then so that was done this morning and then a lot of the day was spent planning out and gluing the first return line. So we go through, so the pump will be in this last chamber. We'll come up to this barb fitting and then it will split at this. Sorry about that. Dropped a piece of pipe. Um, but yeah, so the water will then go up 
This is where we'll hit our UV sterilizer. I'm gonna do that uh, first thing Monday. And then this line here goes up and then returns back. So that, and this is glued, but there's a lot of unions. There's two unions here. Union here, union here, so we can really still adjust this whole line. Uh, as you can probably just see, I just moved the whole thing. Uh, so we still have plenty of play. The only thing, like I said, left to do is the sterilizer. Uh, I did have to order a couple of extra parts for the sterilizer, uh, so let me show you that. Basically, because we're hard coming everything in, uh, this piece is a reducer, it's two inches to one inch. This is gonna go in our sterilizer. Let me go over to the display and show you. So where this white fitting is and the barb fitting, uh, there's a union here. Uh, I ordered a new black piece for each side because these white pieces are glued in. Uh, so we're gonna replace that, it'll be black, and then it will go to gray, and then the red pipe will come right out, so it'll be hard pumped. We won't have a barbed fitting on either side, so it'll just be directly plumbed. Uh, so that'll go through here. So the idea is it'll come up, we'll use an elbow, it'll go into the UV, come up, come out, and then we'll have it branch back over and then up. So these are all barb fittings. Again, these are pretty much gonna be right at the ceiling level, so you'll barely be able to see them. Uh, and then there'll be one more, so there'll be the two return lines on the outside and the two drains in the middle. So that's pretty much it for today. Uh, we'll be back with the next part um, early next week, or whenever we get the parts for the sterilizer in. Uh, the only other thing that we'll have to add, which I'm going to put directly after the sterilizer, is our Apex uh, flow meter, or flow switch, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so this will go after the uh, UV sterilizer, and then uh, the only wires that I'll have to figure out how to route are for the sterilizer and for the flow meter. Um, we'll probably just drill a small hole in the wall, drop them behind the wall, down under the stand. Uh, that's the plan. And then everything else, we'll just drape it over the back of the sump. Uh, they were ever so nice to supply some slits for, I would assume, probably heater, return pump, or two return pumps. And then under the manifold, there's, a, there's five holes, I believe. One, two, three. Yeah, three holes, and then a double hole right here. So these can all be used to route wires. The probes will go here. The wires will probably come through here. Uh, the skimmer is going to go on this side. So the wire, again, can come through there. If we have any other tubing that we need, uh, we can always route it through there. So any, any other devices that we decide to put in this chamber, we can route the wires through there. This chamber will probably be used as a refugium so that we wouldn't need any wires. And if there are wires, they're gonna be for a light that'll be clamped so the wire will already come through the back. Shouldn't need anything inside. Um, but again, we can figure that out when the time comes, if we ever decide to put something in there. So that's pretty much it for this week. And like I said, I'll come back Monday and finish this up and then we can probably get it into place probably Tuesday or Wednesday hopefully um, again it depends on when those parts for the skimmer come or not the skimmer the UV sterilizer um, but worst case if I can't plumb the sterilizer I have a ball valve right here I can always just close it off plumb that wait a day for the glue to dry and then uh, just open it up all right, so as you can see, we've gotten the sump installed. Uh, the last that you saw, we were putting the pipes in and getting everything cut and glued together. Uh, so we've gone ahead and installed the sump and gotten the tank running. So the tank will drain through these two um, drain lines into the first chamber, passing through the filter socks, 
going through the rest of the sump, and then being returned back into the tank. So in our next video, we're going to go through a detailed explanation of our entire system. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications to join us on our journey through the sea.